Okay, then it's time to start with a fresh new topic, which is trigonometric ratios of compound angles. Now, what is a compound angle? Basically, a combination of two angles or three angles or finitely many angles is called a compound angle. So if you add or subtract two or more angles, you end up getting a compound angle. For example, if A and B are two angles, then A plus B is a compound angle formed by A and B. And also A minus B is a compound angle formed by A and B. Our agenda is to find out the trigonometric ratios of these compound angles. And because these compound angles are formed with the help of these individual angles only, the natural curiosity arises that is there any relationship between the trigonometric ratios of these compound angles and the trigonometric ratios of these individual angles? If yes, what is it? Let's find out. Let's begin by computing the cosine ratio of the compound angle A minus B. For that, you consider a unit circle, which is a circle centered at origin radius one unit. Now on this circle, let R be a point such that OR makes an angle B with the positive x-axis in the anti-clockwise sense. Then coordinates of point R are going to be cos B comma sin B, right? Similarly, consider a point S on the circle such that OS makes an angle A with the positive x-axis in the anti-clockwise sense and this will give me that the coordinates of S are cos A comma sin A. Now, after all this is done, can you tell me what is the measure of this angle? Well, it's obvious the measure is A minus B. Now that I know the measure of the angle A minus B, I am going to do a very smart step. I am going to deliberately consider a point Q on the circle such that OQ makes an angle of A minus B with the positive x-axis in the anti-clockwise sense so that the coordinates of point Q eventually turn out to be cos of A minus B comma sine of A minus B. Yes, now in this entire process, what have I obtained? Let me share that with you. See, angle POQ is actually the angle subtended at the center of the circle with the help of the PQ chord of measure A minus B. Yes, similarly, angle ROS is also an angle subtended at the center of the circle by the RS chord again of the same equal measure A minus B. But I know as a matter of fact that only equal chords can subtend equal angles at the center of the circle and hence I obtain that the length of the PQ chord is exactly same as the length of the RS chord. Isn't it? Now, if you just focus on the PQ chord, let me treat this as x1 comma y1 and let me treat this as x2 comma y2. Then the length of the PQ chord using the distance formula comes out to be under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Agreed? Yes. Similarly, I am going to calculate the length of the RS chord. Focus on the RS chord. Now suppose I take this as x1 y1 and this as x2 y2. Okay, so using the distance formula again, the length of the RS chord comes out to be under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square and accordingly I've plugged in the values, right? Now that both sides of the equation are non-negative, I can very easily square both sides so that I can get rid of these square root sign which are really irritating me. Okay, so let me square both sides. This is what I'm going to get. Both sides are going to get free of the square root sign. Cool. Now let's proceed with solving what we've got. In here, this is nothing but it's like x minus y whole square. Okay, so it will be x square minus 2xy plus y square. And this plus sine square a minus b is kept as it is. Okay, so left hand side we are trying to resolve. Now let's move to the right hand side. Right hand side is cos b minus cos a whole square. Again, identity of x minus y whole square. It will come out to be x square plus y square minus 2xy. Similarly, I have plus sine b minus sine a whole square. Again, plus x minus y whole square, which is going to come out to be sine square b plus sine square a minus 2 sine a sine b. 
Okay, let's simplify this. Well, this is cos square of a minus b sine square of a minus b. You know cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1 for any angle which is theta. Cool. So cos square a minus b plus sine square a minus b is going to give me 1. This is minus 2 times cos of a minus b. Cool. And here I have a plus 1. So 1 plus 1 will make this 2. That is left hand side simplification. Let's move on to the simplification of the right hand side. Cos square b plus sine square b. Well, cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1 for any real theta. So cos square b plus sine square b will give me 1. Cos square a plus sine square a will give me 1 again. Minus 2 times cos a cos b. And minus 2 times sine a sine b. Yes, easy peasy calculation. 1 plus 1 will become 2. And hence... This is what I get. Okay, let's simplify this further. So this two, this two cancels out. I'm going to multiply both sides by a minus sign. I obtain 2 cos a minus b equal to twice of cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. 2, 2 cancels out. What do you have? You are actually just left with what you wanted. The cosine ratio of the compound angle A minus B, which is coming out to be equal to cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. And bingo, we have obtained what we wanted, which is the cosine ratio of A minus B, coming completely in terms of the sine and the cosine ratio of the individual angles A and B. Got it? So, how to remember this? Well, if I treat A as the first angle, B as the second angle, then according to this formula, cos of first minus second is cos of first into cos of second plus sine of first into sine of second. Okay, using this, let's try to compute the cosine ratio of another compound angle, which is A plus B, right? For that, realize that A plus B can actually be written as A minus minus B. And hence, cos of A plus B comes out to be this. Now, in here, if I treat this as the first angle and minus B as the second angle, I can apply the formula cos of first minus second, which is cos of first into cos of second plus sine of first into sine of second. Right? Now, what is coming into picture in here? Just see. Cos of minus B. I know cos of minus theta is same as cos theta. So, cos of minus B will be replaced by cos B. And also I know sine of minus theta is minus sine theta. Sine pulls out the minus sine, whereas cos absorbs the minus sine, right? So this will be minus sine b. And hence this complete step transforms to this. Okay, so what do you obtain? That cos of A plus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Or an efficient way to learn this is, Treat A as the first angle, B as the second. So cos of first plus second is cos of first into cos of second plus minus sine of first into sine of second. Got it? For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.